Tonight, two investigates an adult product that in the wrong hands could potentially be deadly. We're talking about the nicotine liquid that goes into e-cigarettes. And we've learned that calls to California Poison Control for nicotine poisoning has more than doubled so far this year. The problem is children are getting hold, uh, a hold of the potentially toxic liquid. There is a solution, but it's not required by law. And KTV's Melanie Woodrow is in San Francisco tonight to explain why not. Mel Frank, these are the nicotine liquids that someone who vapes would put into a vape pen or an e-cigarette. The problem is a child's resistant cap is not required by law on these potentially toxic liquids. Hundreds of children have landed in California emergency rooms for ingesting or sometimes even just touching the liquids in these bottles. Less than a quarter teaspoon could be toxic to a child. From its recognizable vape clout to detectable scent. Candy flavors to uh, tobacco flavors. E-cigarettes and vaping are a growing trend and potential problem if in the wrong hands. Her eyes were rolling back in her head and she was just sloppy. Mom Nicole Oliver says 22-month-old Winona nearly died after drinking half a 15-milliliter bottle of e-cigarette liquid containing nicotine. Poison control said she has way over the OD limit. And, you know, and obviously she was not even like this. I mean, you pick up her arm and it would fall. Health officials say the nicotine in e-cigarette liquids can be toxic, whether it is ingested or saturates the skin. So much so that employees who mix and package it wear protective gear. But there's no law in California requiring child-resistant caps to keep the toxic liquid out of the hands and mouths of curious children. And the number of poisonings is on the rise. In 2012, there were 28 calls to California Poison Control. In 2013, nearly four times as many with 106 calls. And with two months still left in 2014, that number has already practically doubled to 203 calls. More than 60% of victims this year have been five years old or younger. As little as 10 milligrams could be very toxic to a small child. And that's the amount you'd find in less than a quarter teaspoon. Bay Area Congresswoman Jackie Speer wants the Food and Drug Administration to step in. It's the wild, wild west. It's so totally unregulated mm -hmm. that we should be alarmed. She's introduced legislation that would require the FDA to establish labeling and child-resistant packaging standards on all e-cigarette devices and liquids. There's no question that they are targeting young people. Congresswoman Spears says especially with the liquid's candy flavorings. It's like cotton candy and gummy bear. At Deluxe Vapor, owner Rick Evans says he doesn't sell to anyone under 18 without a parent's consent. Also, he chooses to use child-resistant packaging on all his e-cigarette liquids. Well, this child-proof cap right here is pretty common. Uh, it's just a general proofing. It's one that has to be uh, pressed down and then turned. Two investigates wanted to put child-resistant caps to the test. With parents' permission, we stopped by a Berkeley playground where children were even eager to get into these empty, unmarked bottles. Can I smell? We brought two bottles with us, one without a child-resistant cap and one with it. Time after time, these four- and six-year-olds easily opened the bottle without a child-resistant cap. But when it came to the bottle with a child-resistant cap, it's kind of hard. not one child could get it open. Uh, Which way does it go? It's going up, but it keeps going down. Which way would it go? They can get into closets. They can get into anything, even if you put things away. The safest way is always the best. With the number of nicotine poisonings from e-cigarette liquids growing, proponents of regulating the industry want to see manufacturers held to a higher standard before someone dies. I don't want to predict if it's going to happen, but I certainly hope it doesn't. Congresswoman Spear introduced her bill this summer. It's currently in committee. A Florida senator has introduced similar legislation. If legislation were to pass, regulation would likely be divided between the Consumer Product Safety Commission and the Food and Drug Administration. CPSC would likely regulate the packaging, while the FDA would likely regulate the contents of these bottles, the liquid inside of them. And hearing that, doctors say that just a quarter teaspoon could be very toxic to little children.